This exclusive miniseries from the Change Officer podcast is brought to you in partnership with Microsoft Reactor. Stay tuned to find out how Microsoft Reactor can help you build your tech skills and connect you with developers and startups that share your goals. I don't think AI will take over anything. I think AI will improve efficiency, it will increase productivity, and it will help humans to focus on things that really matters. I believe today AI reached a stage where it could automate or replace 20 to 30 percent of processes that is used to be managed by humans and that's it anyone who can promise you over than that they are just lying the technology is more accessible for for anyone mm. so it's just a matter of having the right data on your side and having enough resources to experiment Welcome to the Change Officer Podcast's Future of Technology mini-series brought to you by Microsoft Reactor. In this four-part special edition of the show, we are delving into the latest technology that is shaping the future at an increasingly rapid pace. Join us as we speak to four remarkable industry experts and unpack the topics of big data analytics, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and the metaverse, getting to the bottom of how these technological advancements will affect us, our businesses, and the world at large. It could be argued that most of our opinions about artificial intelligence are shaped by its cinematic depictions. But how does this futuristic technology actually work? And what are the real-world use cases for it that will make a difference in the way we work and live? To answer these questions, we spoke to Sari Huaitat. Sari is the CEO and co-founder of Xena, the world's first Arabic interactive voice assistant and chatbot. Xena uses artificial intelligence to automate customer care functions and allow businesses to free up their employees from repetitive tasks. If you want to be a part of the next big thing, this episode is a must-watch as it digs into why the AI space is one you should carefully consider. Sari debunked some commonly held beliefs about AI, broke down some of the previously unsolvable problems that this technology is taking on, and finally dove into the unique challenges of starting a business in this field. Enjoy. Welcome to the Change Officer, Sorry. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for flying uh, in from Jordan to take this episode with me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, <laughs> I'm really flattered to be invited to the change officer. It's not true that he flew in from Jordan just for the episode, but I like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm super excited about this conversation as a part of uh, the Future of Technology series that we are working on. Uh, today's topic, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence um, as a topic has been around for a while now. Uh, a lot longer than many think or believe, um, or a lot longer since uh, it became popular as a term. Now, although it's been around for a while, um, there is a lot of ambiguity, I'm sure, around it um, in the market, in the globe, even with people who are holding titles of artificial intelligence ambassadors and, and engineers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I like to ask the question for, for s- such topics. I like to ask the question of you know how do you describe artificial intelligence to everyone? Because every time I ask the question, I get a different answer. So I'm curious to hear from you uh, wh- 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 when you're explaining to to your you know uh, cousin, little cousin, you know, what is artificial intelligence? What do you say? Um, I would say it's uh, statistics, but with much much more data and a huge computational power. All right, that's artificial intelligence in a very simple word. That's an, that's a very interesting take on that. Um, uh, b- but at the same time, there's a lot of uh, commonly held beliefs out there about w- w- artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, but what are some of them that you passionately disagree with? That people believe, but you are like, no, that's not it. <laughs> AI will take over the world. Yeah. I totally disagree with that. I don't think AI will take over anything. I think AI will improve efficiency. It will increase productivity and it help it will help humans to focus on things that really matters. Yeah. I think it is the way how AI was introduced uh as well and, and maybe because of the term artificial intelligence that mm-hmm. we watched way too many movies. Uh, where artificial intelligence was presented in a robotic way. Uh, yeah, Terminator. 
taking over the world. Um, is artificial intelligence capable of replacing every single human process? As of today, I don't think so. Um, I believe today AI reached a stage where it could, let's say, automate or replace 20 to 30 percent of processes that is used to be managed by humans. And that's it. Anyone who can promise you over than that, they are just lying. Mm. There is there is a very long way for us to reach a level where AI could replace 80 percent or 70 percent of uh, activities that is managed by humans. Is that because of the technological advancement or something else? Definitely, it, it, it goes back to the technology advancement and, uh, and AI advanced really, really well in the past five years. But still, as of today, even the big players in, in this uh, space, uh, they can't promise you uh, heaven. They can't promise you that we can replace, for example, your call center agents or mm. we can replace your um, receptionist or whatsoever. AI has limits. As of today, it has limits. And these limits, uh, the reason for these limits are the technology advancement. Once we saw that the... Um, GPUs market advanced very well. We started seeing more advanced uh, use cases for AI. But if you take it back to the 90s, for example, um, what was AI? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah. So, it, so it, it's it's really tied with what we are innovating in the hardware space, because if we innovate in in in, in that part, then we have more computational power. And if we have more computational power, then we will have a stronger algorithms. And if we have stronger algorithms, then we can introduce new use cases and then we can introduce uh, new capabilities for AI. Mm-hmm. So if there is no innovation in that space, I don't think we will see any advancement in, in the use cases of AI anytime soon. So artificial intelligence is, is, is or the output of artificial intelligence is the result of combination of couple of elements as i understand data and data being collected data being analyzed mm-hmm. but to analyze increasing amounts of data you need computational power you need computational power and that's where possibly something like quantum computing is stepping in i yep. would assume um, and then by analyzing these huge amounts of data making some sort of decisions or predictions for 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 certain action or patterns or, or the trends and then you can take action based based on that but data is another issue that we have today because of now definitely there's the restrictions on on using uh, data this will limit uh, the capabilities of ai uh, i'm not saying that it should be allowed to use uh, the user's data or anything but what i'm saying is we need to be reasonable about and people they need to be aware of how they are uh, giving up their data and what is being used for we don't need to to be closed on that we don't need to restrict data collection we just need to govern it mm-hmm. we just need to raise awareness for the users on what data are we collecting how we are using this data and uh, for what exactly mm. and if we can incentivize them by if they can monetize their data that would be a share on the top yeah yeah that's that's a completely new possibly business model as well uh, yeah. for, for 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 some new companies um talking about like just trying to bring closer uh, in practical terms uh, this whole topic to to myself first of all and then to the audience you know it's always a good excuse you know, let's explain to the audience yeah uh, where is actually to uh, where is actually i don't understand um some of the most advanced examples or use cases of ai today um what what would those be where ai is solving um major uh, challenge that uh, couldn't be solved before Well, it depends on the industry because every industry will tell you that this is the ultimate use case for AI as of today. But I will speak for my industry or where I'm coming from at uh, at Xena. I believe voice assistance is the most advanced use case of AI as of today because it combines a lot of or different AI models within the same uh, the same product. So. Uh, You are talking about speech recognition, NLP, uh, um, voice cloning. There's a lot in, in, in the back office mm. when it comes to 
voice uh, assistant. So I believe it is the most advanced use case of AI as of today. Sure. So this is a good segue to to, to the topic of, of of Xena, and obviously one of the reasons you are here is uh, um, the fact you are um, running a, a startup, Xena AI, which is okay. The, f- the world's, first, the, f- the, f- the world's the first the voice assistant that assistant. could speak and understand the local dialects, dialects of, of MENA region. Of MENA region, which yeah. is um, a lot more interesting than it sounds at the at the first sight. Uh, for anyone coming from the industry would mm-hmm. understand. But although there are voice recognition uh, uh, systems out there for Arabic. Uh, there's so many different dialects of Arabic and yep. for uh, a system to recognize every dialect it takes a lot of data I would assume a lot of data that is not there that is not even collected at the mm. moment yeah um, so introduces Xena uh, first of all and then we'll talk about m- more about practical use cases of AI and, and what you faced so far and what any, anyone who is trying to build something with AI will face in the future yeah. Well, um, as I said, Xena is, is a voice system that could speak and uh, understand the local dialects of MENA region. We saw there's a gap in this market because the big players are only focusing on the Arabic standard, which we uh, we read in the newspaper or we hear in the uh, news, and that's it. But uh, Arabic language is very complicated and it has many different variations. So within the same country, you will find many dialects of the same dialect, so dialect, Arabic language, dialect, sub-dialects, etc. And uh, I said, um, this is a very good uh, gap in the market. If mm. we can tackle this issue, if we can solve it, the opportunity is huge. There's around 420 million Arabic speakers in, mid- in the Middle East. There's around 270 million people in the world, they consider Arabic as their second language. So that's a total of almost 700 million people in the world. Exactly, exactly. That's a huge market. So mm-hmm. if you can develop something for these, for for those people, uh, a voice system, they could speak to it and they can understand it in their local dialects. Then we can introduce a lot of use cases for uh, for such uh, technology. Uh, you will uh, you will see smart home uh, products will penetrate the market faster. You will see. Uh, a voice assistant uh, within your uh, vehicle, you will see a lot of use cases. If we can localize this technology for MENA region, for the Arabic speaking consumer. So uh, that was the main uh, driver behind the idea of uh, Xena. Besides that, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Iron Man, as I told you before, mm-hmm. and I always wanted to build my own Jarvis, mm-hmm. my own voice assistant. Mm-hmm. But uh, instead of having my own uh, Jarvis, I decided um, let's take another approach. Let's build something for businesses, not for the end consumer. So it's a B to B to C sure. model. And uh, we want to, if we want to monetize, because at first when we thought it it should be a B to C product uh, that you can use it on your uh, smartphone. Nobody is paying for Siri, for example. No, absolutely. Yeah, that that comes almost as an added value to exactly to what you have. So the only way to monetize such technology is to make it a B two B product. We sell it to to uh, businesses, to enterprises, so they can automate their uh, customer service, customer engagement, interactions, etc. And then they can offer it free of charge, of course, for their end consumer. So that was uh, the the business model that I wanted to build. And uh, of course. Yeah. Was the uh, um, um, so w- did AI came as a following step as a possible solution to the problem, or you were looking to solve a problem with AI in the first place? How did you came across AI as being the technology? AI is the only solution for something like this. For something like this, it's only impossible to solve it any other it, way. Exactly, there is no way you can solve it other way because now how how does Xena works? Xena has three main AI technologies embedded with it so the first the first one is the speech recognition so when you speak to her she needs to transcribe your uh, spoken words into text because machine doesn't understand only text Mm -hmm. how did you decide it's going to be her again how did you decide it's going to be her not uh, him well um that's a very good question actually 
Well, the main reason, as I said, the, it was in the beginning, it was Jarvis. So uh-huh. it was a male. All right. Then uh, the, the name came Zena. Zena stands for Extremely Intelligent Natural Language Assistant. And Zena is a female name. Ah, so okay. that's why. Right, this was a good answer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good diplomatic answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please. Carry and on, yeah. so, so when, when, um, when you speak to Zena, Zena needs to hear you. By saying that uh, you need, we need to transcribe your spoken words into text, and then we feed the N- the NLP engine with that text. The NLP engine will understand your intent and will generate a response. The response will go into another engine, which is the text to speech. Now we need to now we need to convert that text into spoken language. So all of that happens in milliseconds. Mm-hmm. So you are talking about three different AI technologies embedded within the, with the same solution just to produce a spoken words. Okay, everyone, we'll get back to the conversation in a minute, but I wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to the sponsor of this exclusive mini-series, Microsoft Reactor. If you tuned in for this episode, you're most likely coder, developer, or a data scientist. You probably also believe that upskilling yourself and staying connected with passionate, like-minded people in your industry is important. If that's true, you should definitely check out Microsoft Reactor's Creative Tech Minds community. When you become a part of Reactor's community, you get access to their free educational videos and self-paced learning paths, in-person presentations, workshops, and local meta groups. These allow you to network with potential mentors, build your tech skills, and connect with fellow coders, cloud developers, AI enthusiasts, and data scientists. If this sounds like something you need, you can find the link to Microsoft Reactor's website in the show notes of this episode. I truly believe this can be super beneficial for your career path or your business, so I encourage you to do so. Now, enjoy the rest of this show. Are these kind of technologies something that companies like yours build in house or the, you, you, you leverage on, 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 on some existing technologies? Well, the existing engines in the market, uh, as I said, they don't cover the dialects of the Arabic language. So we had to develop our own engines. And this is why we decided to build our own speech recognition engine, our own text-to-speech engine. And even when, when, we, when we gave her the voice, we had to, to develop our own voice cloning uh, uh, algorithm. So now, if you give me 10 recorded hours, for example, of your voice, we can clone it. We can, we can make the machine speak your, your, in your voice. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And um, building a company that is based on, on AI technology comes with all sorts of or set of challenges that are not there if you are, you know, building a company that is more process oriented or a SaaS solution that is, you know, leveraging standard set of technologies is more process oriented. What are sort of the challenges that you faced when you started building a business in this space? To find believers, that was the first challenge. All oh, right. Yeah, to find uh, believers. And uh, I believe I was lucky enough to find those believers very early on. Uh, they are my co-founders, um, Abe, Siksik, uh, Ramis Kalis, and Zena Majali. Uh, when I first met them and we started discussing the idea that, uh, that I had, um, I found that... Uh, they have been managing um, a PPO business for the past 16 uh, years. Uh, mainly they are focusing on uh, uh, contact center uh, solutions so, and customer service. And they have tons of data. Tons. But uh, no one was there to utilize this amount of data into uh, a product that could be monetized and could be um, a solution for a huge problem. And uh, when we started discussing the idea of Xena and what we are going to do to do, to do with it, um, I found that uh, I have a believers on my side and uh, they are willing to give me all the support that I need to build this product. And uh, within a couple of weeks, uh, we hit the road running. Wow. And um, other than people that are required for, for you to get on an endeavor like this, when you got into a space of, of, of engineering, um, what did you face there? How, how difficult was it to build your first version? To be honest, we didn't really have any idea about the tech stack that we are going to use. It was a trial and error. 
but uh, we we understood the mission we understood the vision and we we knew what we want to build and we started our R&D the first year it, we were under radar yeah. uh, we didn't even have a facebook page for example i didn't want that i just wanted to prove that we can actually build the product after we prove that then we can start marketing reaching out to investors and and everything so uh, <clears throat> at the first stage as i said it was a pure r&d uh, effort uh, trying to to see what is out there what is in the market uh, to benchmark with them and then we realized okay so we need to have this and that uh, all right so how to develop that mm. start your research read white papers read papers go to uh, uh, other players uh, and investigate what they have done and everything and then we realized that uh, that the aha moment when we saw the whole architecture of the solution and what we need to build mm. once you understand what you need to build you will figure it out but if you don't have any idea about it in the first place then so what what would you say was your biggest learning of that first uh, exploratory R&D phase uh, it was a hit in the face huh. I, I understood that the challenge is really really big you need tons of data. You need um, brilliant engineers on your side just to develop this product. The speech recognition, especially, it's the most difficult thing to develop uh, in, in, in AI because uh, there's a lot of factors coming in for the understanding of the machine. So, for example, you might develop a voice, uh, a speech recognition engine that could understand. Uh, and, and a high quality uh, voices, but if the voice in a low quality, then it wouldn't understand. So you need to optimize and then you will find some bias. So you will realize that the speech recognition engine is understanding male voices, but it, does, it doesn't understand female. So you need to feed it with more female voices. That optimization, that was the biggest challenge for us. Hmm, well, interesting. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you, you mentioned data uh, and the amount of data being an issue, that issue is being s- kind of sort of slowly solved, I guess. But mm-hmm. I, I assume we are not even close to to having it solved completely. Yeah, it's not uh, solved completely. Where, where do you, right w- how do you collect uh, data, and where are all the touch points where you collect the data so that you can actually analyze the? And how important is the data collection piece of of of, of the whole uh, system? Well. Um, as of today, as I said, I partner up with, with a call center, so they have tons of data. But uh, it's in a raw condition, so you need to, uh, to process that data before you feed it to your engine. And that's a very long process, very costly. Mm. Uh, the labeling, the cleaning, the chunking, etc., that's, that's the, the most expensive part of developing an AI model. You can develop the AI model within couple of months and you can train it within a month and you can test the result but preparing the data Mm. to train the AI model that's the most expensive the longest and the most painful process of building an AI product so for even anyone out there who is looking to get into this space whether on the corporate side or on the entrepreneurial side uh, what would you say would be Step number one, step number two, and step number three in building such a product. Well, the first step for the corporates, I would say, to prepare the mindset of their stakeholders. Uh, they need to be patient. Uh, they need to understand that they are shooting for the long term. Uh, in the first to stay in the early stages, the the the, the first couple of uh, months, let's say, uh, they should not expect anything from AI because as I said it's a trial and error and then you optimize based on your findings based on the results and uh, I believe it's the the number one reason why many AI projects within corporates are failing today because they are expecting an immediate result that's not the case with AI not at all Mm -hmm. for startups first of all once you define a problem that you want to solve with AI make sure that you have enough data Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two, find believers, angel investors, but a believer angel investor who understand that AI is not, it's not like that. 
Uh, and uh, once you have a, a clear definition of the problem that you want to solve, then you can really understand if AI can solve it or not, because mm-hmm. not everything can be solvable with AI. That's not the case. Uh, so I think I think this is the the main thing with with um, the challenges. And uh, today, I believe uh, people are and corporates are becoming more aware of. It's not uh, it's not like uh, developing a, a mobile app for uh, food ordering or for uh, ride sharing or something like that. It's our, it's an R and D in the first place, and then you can productize it. But at first, you need to invest uh, in in your people. You need to give them that mental safety mm. that uh, it's okay if we fail, as long as we are learning and we are optimizing and we are getting better day in day out. Sure. Well, I mean, from what you are saying, this sounds like, you know, any major success uh, is at the end of a very uh, difficult path and the journey. And the more difficult the path and the journey is, the fewer will reach to the end. But those who and reach, the bigger the reward, the bigger the reward mm-hmm. will be. So, um, would you say that we are still at the early stage? Of, of AI and that still the ones who are exploring with this um, technology and this whole um, area are early adopters that are in for a big reward if they solve the problem? No, I totally agree. I totally agree. I think we are still in the very early stages. However, w- the difference between what is happening now and what was happening 20 years ago, uh, that 20 years ago, uh, you might see an AI product and uh, they are uh, showcasing the product in exhibitions, conferences, etc. But it's not in the market because they are still in the very early uh, stages of R&D. But now it's becoming cheaper than before and uh, the technology is more accessible for, for anyone. Mm. So it's just a matter of having the right data on your side and having enough resources to experiment. Sure, yeah. but twenty years ago that was that not was not possible. Yeah, no. where do you believe we will be in ten years? Ten years from now, um, I believe uh, I believe we will see uh, AI integrated with uh, within many products that we already use today, uh, especially in the NLP part, uh, because there is a huge advancement is happening in natural language processing now. Um, Nvidia, Microsoft, um, Amazon, everyone, everyone is is, is racing uh, to innovate in, in in that space in particular. Uh, we will see. We will start engaging more with chatbots. We will start engaging more with voice assistant. We will start engaging with if in the retail industry we will see the self-serving kiosks and you can interact with it in a very contextual conversation. So are we going to reach finally that stage when we talk to the chatbot, we don't actually realize it's a chatbot? Well, it's already happening in some use cases. Mm -hmm. It's already happening in some use cases. Uh, But we are not that in, when we imagine it, how we are speaking to a chatbot or a voice assistant, we imagine a very natural conversation. That's still not the case. But if, uh, if, if, if we take uh, um, a very specific use case and we focus on that use case, then we can definitely, this is today, this is not 10 years from now, then you can definitely have a very natural conversation with that chatbot. Um, but if you want to have a chatbot that speaks everything and understand everything, definitely you don't have that much of data to train it on it. So you will have that impression I'm speaking to a robot. Yeah. Well, sometimes when you speak to a human, you feel you speak to a robot as well. So Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So what I'm curious about, and this is the question that everyone gets, uh, so you're not going to escape it. And I think it's very valuable for, for everyone just to, to get your opinion on it. The change officer is the whole show. He's answering the question of what's the change ahead. Um if we can understand that change, there is a lot of things we can do about it now. What do you think in this area of, of AI? Is the change that will happen in, in the you know medium term future or short term future that will unlock some major new opportunities or what would be the area, the, the next area that you would look at uh, when it comes to AI um, that is worth investing time 
in that can bring you to that bigger reward. Mm-hmm. Here's a question. Now, everybody is talking about the metaverse. All right. But the metaverse, it's, um, as, as, as it is described, it's, um, it's a new world with new possibilities. And you can, uh, you can have anything. Uh, you can develop anything for the metaverse. But uh, in order to have that, to unleash that uh, big uh, ambition, you need to integrate a lot, of, a lot of technologies within the same space so you can come up with, to reach that potential of the metaverse. And uh, I believe uh, the AI is, will play a huge role in that, in that uh, space, in, in, in the metaverse. Because uh, if you want to start producing, for example, avatars, characters, everything, you want to give them voice, you want to give them uh, personality, you want to give them uh, um, a look, a feeling, emotions, everything. And this is only possible with AI. Hmm. That's an interesting point. Yeah. Um, I think this is a good way to, to end this episode. And it will, I'm sure, leave many listeners thinking about you know how ai can be the the next big thing and how they can leverage ai to solve some of the problems they are looking at if they want to reach out to mr sorry what would be the best way to do that linkedin linkedin yeah All right. LinkedIn. so make sure to reach out to 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 sorry he'll be happy to share his experience definitely, with you. definitely. Um, and uh, stay tuned there is another great episode coming out really soon thank you for staying until the end and uh, take care Sorry, thanks a lot for taking the time. And uh, I uh, hope to see Gazina taking over the... The metaverse. uh, The the metaverse. (laughs) Thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Take care.